Okay. Um, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for introduction, Doc. Yes, I'm Nikolai Maliski from Bruchai National Laboratory and uh, working on the development of large-scale uh, data management and the computational framework for the experimental facility. And today I will present uh, the talk entitled Bringing HPC Algorithm to the Big Data Platform. It aims to extend the Spark ecosystem uh, with the new category of HPC applications the for accelerating data-driven scientific discovery. And today, uh, here is the outline of my talk. Uh, it will begin by considering Spark as an integrated platform for experimental facility. Then, uh, this topic will uh, be elaborated in the context of the topographic application, uh, which is uh, one of the most important techniques used in the light source facility. So this use case also that highlight the major technical aspects that is important on many other projects. And the analysis of this uh, aspect uh, will lead us to the third part of my talk, the Spark MPI approach. And in conclusion, I will summarize the start of this project and the future development. The first, uh, I would like to give uh, the brief one slide introduction of my current uh, application is a national synchrotron light source uh, facility. And SLS2 uh, is the latest uh, the synchrotron facility built in the United States. It started operation uh, in uh, 2014, just a few years ago. And as a result, uh, it brought the new experimental technologies for supporting very impressive uh, scientific programs in the wide range on the different fields. Facility itself, uh, it's based on the accelerator complex running the electron and the, through the multiple insertion devices that generate this X-ray for the different beam lines. And the experimental, uh, the program started with the seven beam lines and as you can see, it just uh, gradually they expanded. What is important for this picture from the perspective of the big data technologies, so data actually is distributed among multiple users and our immediate concern associated with the big velocity, uh, which is driven by the new generation of X-ray detectors. It's that they're able to produce uh, that uh, multi-megapixel images with the, the kilohertz rates. And also, uh, this facility highlights another very important aspect, <clears throat> that importance of the generalization of software solutions there for optimal development and operation of the multiple beam lines. And this topic, is becoming even more uh, actual from the much larger perspective. Because NSLS2 is a member of the big family of the data science drivers. And the history of this uh, family started many years ago the, from the, and took roots uh, from the uh, large-scale high-energy physics project, such as the uh, superconductive supercollider laboratory in the Texas. And at the time, so there's a big data infrastructure was developed from scratch by the army of the experimental scientists. And eventually, so the new experimental and the computer technologies, the maps, this fourth paradigm of data intelligence science to the other programs that now encompass basic energy science, biological and environmental research, fusion energy science, nuclear physics, and of course, high energy physics. And the, this growing number of the project and the various programs that immediately uh, generate the uh, demand uh, for the generalization of the project-specific approaches and, of course, integration of the uh, big data technologies uh, in this project. At the same time, the scientific application brings the new requirements for big data platform. Because, in general, <clears throat> that uh, large-scale experimental facility uh, have to deal with the two ecosystems, big data and HPC computing. So this description is based on the survey of Jeffrey and Fox and colleagues that analyze almost the 300 software projects. And as you can see, there is a clear gap between the two categories of the technologies. But this category, of te this technology should be integrated if you're going to approach the new frontiers and including, of course, a data-driven scientific discovery. To facilitate this integration, we propose to uh, focus on the, their primary representative, and the Spark and MPI. And as a result, the integration task 
it just narrowed down to the three choices. The first, one can start with a Spark and add MPI range at extension. The second, <clears throat> one can use MPI and add some big data infrastructure. And finally, one can develop the completely new model. And from my perspective, actually, the first direction is directly associated with the talk from uh, today's talk from the presented by the uh, Jan uh, Stoika. Yeah, so that's and the topic of this talk also focus on the same direction. And the next slide uh, will uh, explain and uh, justify our decision. So these slides that represent the Spark as an integrated platform for experimental facility. According to the Spark architecture, it is based on the resilient distributed dataset middle layer that decouples the multiple um, data sources from the high-level applications. And the, from this perspective, so each experimental facility can be considered as one of the Spark project that can be integrated with the, this infrastructure by implementation of the composite conductor and the receivers. This integration immediately provides the scientists with open collection of data intensive uh, the algorithm, including the SQL, machine learning, graph processing, and the streaming. And what is important, all these algorithms can be used all together in the same environment for building the different phases of data and information knowledge discovery path. This collection, however, is not complete. It needs to be extended uh, with the new category of HPC application that originally based on the MPI framework. Therefore, we suggest to edit uh, the MPI orient extension in the Spark environment. So now from the big picture, I'm going to the uh, reference use case, uh, tachographic application. So a few words about the tachography. As I already said, the tachography is one of the most important techniques they use in the light source facility. In general, it's based on the scanning of the <coughs> sample with the X-ray coming from the left on this picture. This X-ray sample iterations, or sometimes called the probe object iteration, uh, generate the uh, data set of the diffraction pattern in the far field that is uh, measured by the detector. Reconstruction algorithm is uh, iterative with uh, each iteration including that, uh, the two steps, and the uh, forward and inverse and the FFT uh, transformation. The, the, where are the many different flavors of the uh, tachography algorithms implemented in the different programs? And one of that is a sharp multi-GPU uh, solver uh, developed by the uh, camera team at Berkeley. So that last year, we successfully applied the sharp uh, uh, the framework uh, to the HXN application at NSLS2. And for example, on the left side, you see the data set of the diffraction pattern and on the right side, the corresponding the reconstructed the probe and object of the same experiment. That what is important, the sharp framework, the significantly boosted performance of the uh, local algorithm in SLS2, and the resolve a prerequisite for the building near real time processing pipeline. And as you know, that this direction addresses uh, many emerg emerging applications, and uh, that adding the time dimension. In the, in the picture. One of them, for example, a uh, tomographic experiment, okay, that add uh, the object uh, rotation, they're producing that, the series of tachographic projections. In this experiment, the, each tachographic projection is a reconstruction for the 10 of thousands of the detector frames. And as a result, the multi-GPU version is a really important uh, for the two reasons, for the performance and the GPU memory. So, as you can see, the, the most part of this um, algorithm is just um, the frame-wise interestingly dependent, and they can be easily parallelized by distributing the uh, frames among the different GPU engines. However, there is an emission probe that is shared by the all uh, engines and need to be updated during iteration loops. So that interworker communication is important, and the, and the sharp uh, framework it is based on the MPI all reduced methods. The corresponding multi-GPU version is successfully applied again to the new experiment and they demonstrate the uh, feasibility of the um, near real-time scenario. The furthermore, so uh, this is a um, experiment, is a, this optographic uh, application is a consistent with the uh, micro bench of the uh, processing model of the streaming environment because that 
uh, in this picture, so this, uh, the, each microbench may include the hundreds of the thousands of data frames. So that uh, at this time, however, the Spark doesn't support interworker communication, therefore we decide it's to integrate or they develop our own extension. Now, so I'm moving to the uh, third part of this talk, the Spark MPI approach. So before uh, any development, so we decided to look around and uh, <coughs> investigate uh, the uh, Spark-based solutions uh, addressing to the uh, most advanced and the popular and the application the big data uh, ecosystem is deep learning. According to Jeffrey Dean, so this uh, and the colleagues, so what is the two major and the parallel approaches, model parallelism and data parallelism. In the model parallelism, the, the large scales, this uh, deep network is divided among different machines, but this approach is uh, two model oriented. On the contrary, the second approach, data parallelism, is based on the conventional uh, design, so the use in many MPI applications. It divides data set among different model replicas and update the common parameters during the iterations. As you can see, this approach also is very consistent with our sharp uh, approach. And furthermore, so data parallelism provides a very straightforward framework uh, for the building the parallel uh, distributed versions of the, from the single node uh, deep learning engines like CAFE. And this topic was addressed last year that by the several projects presented in the Spark Summit last June. So some of that, okay, so this is shown on this picture, uh, on this slide. They included the SparkNet, TensorSpark, and the Cafe on Spark. Our attention is caught by the Cafe on Spark approach because this team uh, implicitly uh, introduced an interworking uh, interface using their communication, compact communication library supporting the TCP and the RDMA. In addition, so this is an uh, interworker um, interface also provided uh, direct uh, access uh, uh, to the GPU uh, for the distributed workers. So we decided why not to um, consider it and the benchmark and contents uh, of our application. Okay, so this uh, um, and the sharp multi-GPU framework significantly facilitate this integration because it encapsulates the communication part in the, actually in the few methods of the uh, single communicator class. So in the original version, it was implemented with the MPI then the, in the new approach, in the Sharp Spark approach, it is based on the Cafe on Spark RDMA interworker uh, library. In addition to the Cafe on Spark approach, so we adding also the address exchange server that significantly facilitate initialization step of the interworker interface. And as a result, this Sharp Spark benchmark application was a benchmark uh, on the our cluster with the four in the eight GPU nodes and the demonstrated comparable performance with the MPI as shown in this table. So this results encouraged us to go forward and uh, to finally consider MPI. Here, of course, I need to say at least one slide uh, introduction about the MPI. The first, MPI is the abbreviation for the message passing interface. The second, the MPI was introduced uh, in 1991, more than 25 years ago. Uh, ago and has become the, the de facto standard approach and the use in the most HPC applications and also implemented in the many open source uh, the project and the commercial project as well. In, according to MPI architecture, so this is uh, based on the three major interfaces. The first MPI application programming interface used by uh, application. The second is an abstract device interface that's decoupled uh, API uh, from the multiple uh, communication devices. What is important, including the shared memory, TCP, and the RDMA. And the, the third interface is a process manager that is used by the um, uh, communication between the process manager and the parallel workers. And as you can see from the next slides, so the Sharp Spark capture all three interfaces and provide the natural transition uh, to the MPI-based framework. From the communicator interface to MPI API, from the RDMI address exchange server to uh, the process manager, PMI server of the process manager, and uh, from Cafe on Spark RDMI library to the abstract device interface with the 
huge collection of multiple communication adapter. And uh, furthermore, so this uh, address exchange server that introduced in our, uh, the previous application also that became the, the key approach for integration of the, the Spark and MPI technologies. It will be illustrated in the next slide. So this is the last slide of this uh, section, <clears throat> of my present, this section about the Spark uh, MPI. They demonstrate this approach in, con in context of the conceptual demo. As you can see, the Spark MPI approach uh, just combined the several inter interfaces from the, uh, the Spark and the, from the MPI. Uh, let's start with the Spark components that is paint, of course, in the blue. Okay, uh, according to this demo, so this, uh, uh, that consists of the Spark dryer and the four workers. And on the left side, we see the corresponding the script uh, that is defined according to the RDID um, <coughs> interface. The first, it created RDID, then defined some function, and uh, run it on the distributed workers and the collect results and return back to the uh, driver. So without this uh, interface, all reduced method of MPI, so all workers will not communicate and will process their containers completely dependent. So all reduced methods establish interworker communication and use it uh, to sum their containers. On this demo, uh, this interworker uh, interface is uh, shown by the uh, bold red line. And what is important, uh, this uh, 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 interface uh, doesn't introduce any changes in the Spark uh, because it could be included by importing the corresponding the Python adapter like MPI for uh, PI. And uh, this procedure, however, requires some initialization procedure, as I already said. And MPI is based on the PI server. In our demo, so this uh, address of the server is uh, sent to the different workers and uh, that need to be initialized the environment before the MPI initialization, and that's it. So, as you can see, so that uh, the MPI support the several different uh, the MPI uh, process manager, and uh, in the implementation, PMI server connected together and combined actually uh, together with the launcher. So in the, our Spark environment, so this uh, application is uh, started by the Spark driver. Uh, therefore, from the perspective of implementation, the PMI server needs to be extracted from the corresponding process manager. This demo is based on the GFOCR, the version that requires only the few changes in the main program. So that uh, last month, uh, our Spark-based approach uh, was uh, approved on the SBR and the DAE program. And according to the plan, uh, so we expect to deliver, uh, this is uh, the primary, uh, the Hydra process manager in the few months. And in the summary, I would like to show the path towards our Spark MBI application. And the specific, specifically to the, our Spark-based project, Institute of Streaming Data and Computer Intensive Platform Experimental uh, Data that we're going to start in a few weeks. The finally, I would like to express my acknowledgement to the uh, different teams that are involved in this project, including Kitwe, Yahoo, the Sharp team from the Berkeley, and the Serral team from the Berkeley National Lab. Thank you very much. So we've got 10 minutes for questions here. Um, ah, gentleman with a question. Hi, this is uh, very interesting to see the world of high performance computing re-intersect with, with Spark. So this is very cool and, and takes me back to former lives. Um, one question on implementation, are kind of given the distributed control to some degree between MPI and Spark in coordinating with the workers? Have you run into either race conditions or deadlocks? And how have you addressed that? So you know that we just in really in the beginning of this uh, direction. So for example, I'm going to uh, talk with the MPIP uh, and pitch team, so the next week. So that's uh, actually, so this is a demo and they demonstrate this is a possible and there is a small changes. So all different technical issues will be considered during the phase, uh, phase one of this uh, SBR uh, on the ground. So there's a plan. 
I understand. So I'm and I'm aware about this problem. Yeah. So, but for me, it, we need to start with the idea, and after that, we're going forward. So this we're going to really discuss with the many different people from different labs. So this was really the feedback is really important. Okay. So, other questions? All right. I'll ask a question then. So it looked like you did some comparative benchmarks uh, between different approaches. Was that the case? Uh, benchmark. Uh, did you do any benchmarking on the architecture to see the performance difference? So the benchmark is straightforward. Just if you're using the MPI, just we have a really comparable performance. Because as you can see, so actually the all communication is done using the MPI. But this was really surprised. So this uh, even with the Yahoo, that is not MPI. Okay, so basically so they provide a very similar performance. But in comparison with the MPI, certainly MPI is just take care about the, techn the topology and many other uh, issues. So it means just uh, we just check it and the benchmark on the, the small scale, only the four nodes. We just divided the eight nodes with the Spark and MPI and compare the performance. Uh, the, our next step, certainly, we have the, now the very recent uh, institutional cluster. And they also, as you know, that probably so that NERST also they deployed this, uh, the Spark on the, uh, on the cluster as well. So they're going to really benchmark on the big platform as well. Yes. Excellent. Uh, can you go back to the slide, too, where you were showing the uh, PMI server and the uh, various workers communicating directly? So mm -hmm. here where the workers are communicating directly, is that spanning across jobs as well, like the individual iterations of the machine learning algorithm? No, that, as you can see, that this is a uh, complete script, actually. So this is, what, uh, is running inside. Okay, so it means so that, uh, you know, they're starting step by step. So this with the immediate application. The, in our case, we have uh, like 100 iterations. So that we comparable with the uh, micro batch of the streaming platform, okay? So it means just we expect that all this communication will be done directly in the single shot. So this, uh, but that also will continue with the other, uh, other application and uh, other methods as well. So it means just all this communication is included here. So instead of this one all reduce, it could be really the loop. Got it. Okay, so that's in the it's all clear, reduce yeah? itself. Now the individual iterations of the algorithm um, outside of the reduce, are they actually still communicating back to the driver? So what should I do? No, they just. Oh. Might get our AV guys here. But uh, okay, fair enough. And then uh, no, they just this in, in the side of the method. This uh, in this application show that uh, actually the iteration inside of the method. So this so one already used, but it could be a loop. And but it's a really generic. So this uh, for our reconstruction also deep learning as well. Ah, I got it. Okay. No, so it means just if you deal with the like so, so this topic is really important. This is related with the re reinforcement learning, as you understand. So it's just this idea is just uh, to deploy uh, this application with the streaming and to support the several different uh, approaches, including this, the reconstruction, tomography, and also computer vision. But in addition to that, so that's, that what is the beauty of that, what is the really important, we would like to deploy the deep learning there to be able to uh, uh, run it and, uh, in the online environment, so the, to support the reinforcement approach. So this is the main idea. Excellent, any other questions? Yes, here we go, Jose. I wonder about Luster. Do you use everything on top of Luster or more Hadoop uh, as a HDFS? Okay, so that uh, uh, in our facility, as you know, the, yeah, so uh, the, we're using Luster or the GPFS. Okay, and uh, here, uh, this is a, the, this application is just HPC oriented. So we're using the parallel file system, we use the cluster, but if you're familiar with uh, another project like the uh, scale project, so this is really that uh, very big topic. This is a really st small step with a big topic, the integration of the big data with the big computer. From this perspective, so that they consider the middle layer with the, uh, the, um, uh, uh, between the cluster and the, and, and the parallel file system. And uh, from my perspective, uh, that it should be uh, occupied by the Spark. 
So it means just that all your uh, computer application can use the Spark really to navigate, to select and pre-process your application from the distributed data sets and uh, for the, your high-level application. And uh, as you understand, so this is like the cosmology, and the climate application, and uh, many others. Even so, if you consider deep learning, so this is really moving to the uh, 3D, uh, that uh, computer vision that is really the becoming is very hot now. So that my understanding, so that is uh, for the 3D deep learning, so it will be really important uh, to consider that uh, the, the cluster-based uh, environment. Yes, one more question here. Hi, uh, so I have a question about uh, fault tolerance. So how are you going to support it? So uh, this is related with the first question, so this, uh, it will also be aware about it. Yeah, so we work on that and we expect to evaluate during the uh, phase one of this uh, uh, DIE grant. Yeah, so because now this is just a demonstrated idea, so this uh, the uh, visibility of this approach. And now that, that the next step is just to use this phase one uh, grant uh, to evaluate it uh, from the multiple perspective. So this means, yes, so this what will be clear so after the several months. Okay. So, yeah, this is the scope of our, uh, yes, we understand it. Excellent question. Uh, we have time for one last question. In that case, uh, Nikolai, thank you very much. Let's uh, oops, give Nikolai a hand here. Um, excellent you. talk. Thank you very much. For